Senator Kennedy from Louisiana is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Morstad, for being here today. Um, you're not clairvoyant, and I'm certainly not clairvoyant. So I can just share with you what I've observed so far. I think with respect to risk rating 2.0, I, I think you're presiding over a tire fire. Uh, I think the rollout of, of risk rating 2.0 looks like a, uh, a ferret fire drill. I mean, here's what I hear FEMA saying. We created this program in 1968. FEMA has the authority to uh, assign premiums. We, FEMA, I hear you saying, all these years have been doing it wrong. We've been assessing risk wrong. And now we, FEMA, have had an epiphany. And we have figured out how to look at every individual property out of all the properties in the United States of America and assign the risk for that particular property. But we're not going to tell you how we're going to do it. In fact, we're going to require the insurance companies who are implementing risk rating 2.0 to sign a gag order. We're not going to promulgate a rule. We're not going to allow for public comment. We're just going to do it because we're smarter than the people who pay the premiums. And we're smarter than the United States Congress. Now, I need you to explain to the policyholders of America right now, not within gauzy platitudes, no, no disrespect, Mr. Administrator, but I feel strongly about this. Because you're not waiting. You're going to pull the trigger in August. I need you to explain to them this epiphany that FEMA's had and how if you look at a particular property, you're able now to, to assign with specificity and accuracy flood risk when all these years you did it wrong. Tell me what you did wrong and tell me now why it's going to be accurate. So fundamentally, the methodology is different. Uh, previously, we looked at rating policies based on a zone. I get that part. I I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I only have five minutes. I get the part. In the you're saying I can look at uh, Senator Brown's property now that we've had this epiphany, and we've talked to consultants, and, and, and know specifically on his property what the risk is. How? What new factors are you considering? How are you going to do it? So uh, we don't have much time, and I would just point you to the document that we put on uh, the website that in essence is the same as an insurance rate filing that a private insurance company would provide to a state insurance commissioner that would uh, be able to validate the methodology associated with the rates that they were going to charge. So I would... How are you going to do it? So that document shows how. The, and explains how we do it. We, in essence, uh, the simplified form would be we're using three different commercially available CAT models. We've developed two. Who developed the models? The, one of them is uh, AIR, one of them is uh, CoreLogic, and the other is CAT risk. We combined that with two. Uh, Has the public, well, I'm sorry, go ahead, excuse me. We combined that with, with two uh, government developed, uh, FEMA developed uh, CAT models, include, and then we added replacement cost information that we get from uh, CoreLogic that all the regular okay. insurance let, companies Let me use. stop you because I got 30 seconds, and I'm sorry, Mr. Morstead, I really apologize. I'm, I'm going to ask the chairman to hold another hearing on this. Okay, you've got some consultants, and they've developed models. I get that part. They haven't been tested. We haven't, you, you, you've done no rule. You've done no public comment. Nobody has been allowed to weigh in. Uh, policyholders have no idea what you're talking about. 
You, you know what I've discovered about consultants and predicting the future? For every consultant, there's an equal and opposite consultant. And oftentimes, they're both wrong. And a lot of them are, are their accuracy is about as good as those late night psychic hotlines on TV. And you've done this in secret. Yeah. And it's not right. Well, sir, we And we don't know whether you've considered other alternatives. As Senator Menendez, I'm almost done, Mr. Chairman, as Senator Menendez talked about. Are we paying the insurance companies too much? Is 30% off the top too much? Why aren't we doing a better job of, of requiring people who are supposed to have insurance to have the insurance? What about some of these consultants that I've talked to FEMA about that you could persist in hiring? They're thieves. Yes, sir. So all None good, of this has been addressed. All good points. Uh, look forward to having further discussion with you on all of it. I know how important the National Flood Insurance Program is to, to your state. Over the past 16 years, uh, there have been 260,000 But I want you to understand, Mr. Morris, because I'm going to get cut off. We're, in my state, we're not talking about a bunch of wealthy homeowners who have a second and third beach house. These are working people. They get up every day. They go to work. They obey the law. They try to do the right thing by their kids. They try to save a little money for retirement. Their biggest investment is in their home. And now you're doing this to them without explaining it to them? This will And we wonder why co Congress risk. and the federal government ranks and polls right up there with skim milk? Risk rating 2.0 will assist exactly the people that you're talking about. Two-thirds of the homeowners in, that have pre-firmed uh, uh, subsidized homes are going to see a reduction in their, in their premium. Currently, low-value homeowners, of my people currently are low value homeowners are subsidizing high-value homes. The, the, this program addresses the concern yes, that you have. But you've got to explain should, why, Mr. Morstead. Back to the cat There's model. a lot of distrust of Washington. You've got to explain why. You can't hide your consultants. You've got to be in front of God and country and policyholders. You've got to say, this is the methodology. Now, let's test it through debate. So let's, let's clear the consultant issue up, first of all. Uh, we've been, FEMA's been working on this for five years, uh, thousands of hours. Uh, it, it's probably not a well-known uh, fact, but uh, FEMA has some of the best flood catastrophic actuaries in the country. Then we ought to they test are, them in public. They are top notch. Then they ought to come. They in ought to be tested in public. Data they ought to be cross examined. In addition to, we did use and, and uh, three cap models. The same cap models the reinsurance industry uses to price their product. Then why is FEMA trying please, to hide? Please, we're not hiding. Please wrap up. We're not we're hiding answer, anything. I told you he was going to cut me off. Then, then, then the FEMA shouldn't hide. It shouldn't hide your work. Show your work. We've posted Show your more work. information on the website than what's ever been posted before. I point you to our, our website right. where state That's profiles. The answer. That's the answer, a website. Where, well, sir, and we've done 450 stakeholder engagements since March 1st. Why did you make. Senator, Senator you Kennedy, your time's expired. You've gone over eight minutes, minutes Senator. if you would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you again, Mr. Administrator, for being here. You referenced in, in answering Senator Tillis' question a private company that had quarterbacked this for you that is also a consultant to other insurance companies. Uh, what, what private company is that? Uh, the uh, Milliman. Milliman. Yeah, and they didn't spearhead this. Um, they, um, they, they worked for FEMA right. in helping us make sure that we are uh, in line with the way that uh, a private sector company would go about achieving a, a modern risk-based, right. actuarially sound and, rating system. Right. And how much did M Milliman charge FEMA? I'll have to get back to you on that. Was it ten million? I'll, I don't. I, I'll have to get back to you. You don't know? I will get back to you. Okay. Was it more than ten million? I'm not going to guess, sir. Oh. Okay. Uh, why didn't why didn't FEMA allow for public comment? If you're if you've you've had this epiphany and you've decided that after all these years you've been doing it wrong, and Milliman has now shown you how to do it correctly, why would you not subject that to public comment? So not to be argumentative with you, sir. I mean we we, we weren't doing it wrong for all those years. 
um, it was just a different time and a different, uh, and a different way in which to fundamentally price insurance. When we, when we uh, it was determined that we had yes, uh, inadvertently I, I can over interrupt the years. You. Why ha haven't you, you allowed for public comment? We've put, as I said before, we've, we've made all the information available. We're charged with the responsibility Yes, sir. Uh, charged with the responsibility of developing a risk-based, actuarially sound, site-specific pricing methodology. That's right. what you've told us to do, and that's what we've done. But by your own admission, this this 200 pages report that you put on your website, I wrote down what you said here. You said you have to be an actuary to evaluate it. Did I misunderstand you? No, sir. I mean, you wouldn't have a plumber do an aptomectomy either. I mean, it is, it is uh, done on the basis of the way in which a rating uh, filing... But don't you would... want people to understand the change? So there are, other, there are other tools that we've also put on the website also. We've put a Fundamentals of the Risk Rating 2.0. We've put a video on there. We've put the... Uh, so we've, we've provided that information also, in addition to well, all the stakeholders well, that assist us in communicating is, our is program. Is Milliman going to put in a, 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 a toll-free number where people can call and say, okay, here's my house at 26 um, Main Street, um, Bucksnort, America. You changed my, you increased my premiums because premiums are going to go up by 80%. They are. I mean, we well, might as well be honest with people. No, premiums go up right now, an average of about 10% a year, not 80%. And, and, and as I understand what you're saying is, Mil Milliman, in its wisdom, has decided they can look at a property and decide the risk in an absolute sense, and you can't increase premiums immediately to achieve a premium commensurate with that risk because Congress has stepped in and said, look, you got to consider your customers, for God's sakes. That's who this is for. So you're going to have to do it gradually. But c will I be able to call Millman's and say, Millman's, get, you, you've now um, uh, been able to assess the risk, and you can look 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the future and see it. Can you tell me what my risk is and how long I'm going to have these premiums? And by the way, could I get your advice about the stock market if they're that good? So I, I maybe have not been clear. Milliman did not do what you just articulated. That's not what I hear. Well, uh, then I, we... I hear Milliman fathered this child. No, no, uh, they did not. And we used multiple sources, and it was led by uh, the FEMA chief actuary. And so uh, FEMA drove this process. Milliman supported us in this, in this endeavor. Last question. A lot of people buy insurance because they have to. I'm glad they do. They should buy it. The mortgage lender says, yep, it's in place. Let's close on the loan, and then they drop the insurance. To follow up on Senator Warren's question, why don't we do a better job of, of requiring our mortgage, mortgage lenders to do their job to make sure that people keep their insurance? Sure, and, and of course, the mortgage lenders are responsible for that, and, and they're, they're, they're regulators, and we do want people to have the coverage and keep the coverage. And as I indicated to you before, I want to continue to have discussions with you because I know how important uh, the NFIP is to Louisiana. There have been 260,000 claims paid uh, to L, uh, Louisiana policyholders to the tune of $17.7 billion dollars to help those policyholders on the road to recovery over the course of the last 15 years. So I want this program, and it will work for Louisiana in the future as it has in the past. Thank you, Mr. Thank, thank you, Senator Kennedy. 